Now for a look at the technology that's helping officials track the storm. Cornell University professor Mark Wysocki joins us from Ithaca, New York. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, you study hurricane tracking technology. How would you say that technology has evolved over the last several decades? Uh, the main improvement that we have had is that we're able to see these storms develop farther out into the ocean. And so we have a much uh, longer warning period as these storms start approaching uh, the landfall areas. So it has helped us a great deal in understanding the initiation of these storms. And so that gives us a lot of science that might help us in the future to help predict their motion, where they're going to end up, how fast, and how they develop. And yet you say that things haven't improved as much as you would have expected them to since the 1960s in terms of being able to track the movement and speed of the storm. How is that? Well, we can uh, do a pretty good job in watching how it moves, but in terms of trying to forecast ahead of time, they're out over the ocean and there's a tremendous amount of lack of data. So the satellites help us see the top of the storm, but we really need to see inside and underneath the storm. And that's really blocked out by the clouds themselves, so the satellite really can't see that far into the storm. We would like to set up more technology in terms of buoys out over the ocean so we can actually understand now how the bottom and the top of the storm form together and also to help us and understand where, what is the controlling mechanism on their motion. All right, Mark, hang on. Also joining us on the phone right now is Frank Marks, director of the Hurricane Research Division of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Just hours ago, Frank and his team were flying into the storm trying to get a closer look at Irene. Frank, you, Frank thank you so much for joining us. I assume you're a little exhausted at the moment, but tell us, uh, first of all, give us an update. How bad does Irene look right now? Uh, well, uh, Irene is about the same as it was uh, for the last two days, it's uh, a very large storm um, with a lot of wind uh, out very far from the center, uh, which means that there's a lot of strength in this storm, not just peak wind speed. Uh, uh, what's really going to determine the impact from this storm is how large it is. Now, you've been doing this for decades. You've flown into the eye of over 400 hurricanes. How has technology helped or not helped you track these kinds of storms? Well, I mean, uh, I, I believe the first guess is 100% correct. Satellites are our first line of defense. They tell us that they exist and where they are. Uh, as the storms get closer, we can take aircraft into the storm, and the uh, instrumentation and the technology we use for that has improved dramatically in the three decades I've been doing it from uh, our ability to uh, map the total wind field of the storm using Doppler radar uh, to uh, putting drop signs down and getting measurements at multiple levels in the storm in the center. Uh, and as, as your first guest pointed out, uh, the satellites don't tell us anything but that there's a storm there. Uh, you know, they, the clouds themselves block any ability to detect the wind or the pressure uh, inside the storm. So that's why we use aircraft and remote sensors like radars uh, and radiometers to get us a better feel of the structure. So, Frank, with that kind of uncertainty, how do you use technology to make your best guess to answer those kind of unanswered questions? Well, first of all, uh, we know uh, a lot about how the fluid, the atmospheric fluid works. And we have numerical models of that fluid. Now, uh, also in that three decades, those numerical models have improved dramatically, both in their ability to resolve the details uh, of the tropical cyclone and how it evolves as part of the fluid. Uh, and the other part of it is that we can take advantage of any observations we have and these numerical models through a, a technology called data assimilation to improve our initial analysis and to improve our understanding of how the storm is evolving. Uh, but a, a further one is to address the uncertainty by uh, running the model multiple times and getting what we, we call an ensemble or uh, a number of runs of the or realizations of what the tropical cyclone might be and use that to better understand the uncertainty in any single forecast. Now, Mark Wysocki, you, you've been looking at what kind of technology or how technology could be developed to help uh, better tracking in the future. What kinds of technology do you think 
need more funding and could help clarify this process? I think in terms of uh, what has been mentioned here in terms of the satellites, as well as in terms of getting better resolution of the satellites down to the surface and getting a better idea of the temperature structure of the ocean, that is going to be one of our major goals to try and improve so that we can kind of help uh, put more data into these numerical models for them to digest and then try to figure out how to uh, improve our forecasting ability on the speed and direction that these uh, tropical storms are going to take. So I'd like to see a little bit more going into that also with the buoys and so forth. And besides just putting in the money for the instrumentation and so forth, I know you want to talk about the technology, but we also need to get some pretty good people into this field too that are interested in, in pushing forward the, uh, uh, the knowledge and so forth that we currently have and uh, bringing in some new ideas. Frank, is that something that you would echo? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, uh, I can't uh, dispute that. Um, I, I would say, though, that uh, we have a lot of information already, uh, not, certainly not enough uh, to do a better job. But I would take the example of, her, of Hurricane Irene to demonstrate how good we can do. Uh, the numerical models were telling us uh, 10 days ago that Irene was going to be a major hurricane, or at least a strong hurricane, coming into the Caribbean islands. Now, we may not have had it directly in the right position, but it was certainly within a couple hundred miles. Uh, when, and when you think about it, that's pretty phenomenal because uh, you remember the, the trajectory of a tropical cyclone is just that, a trajectory. And any little errors or any little changes in the beginning of a trajectory have a dramatic impact at the end. And a demonstration of that is uh, if you know the storm motion, to within one meter per second, which is a half a knot, um, uh, excuse me, two knots, uh, then you could, you, you can get an, uh, in an initial motion of a trajectory. If you're off by that amount, you'll be off by about 86 and a half kilometers in one day and about 170 kilometers in, in two days. So the fact that we are track are, is so good tells us how much we do know. And it's really these subtle changes, and, and I think uh, your other guest alluded to uh, the details of knowing the structure and the flow of the fluid, the atmosphere, uh, at very fine resolution has really got what, where we have to go to improve what we're doing right now. Now, now Frank, I know you're going to be going back up in the air tomorrow at 4 a.m., back into the eye of Irene. What exactly are you going to be looking for in terms of reevaluating the danger level of this storm? Well, we're going to map the wind structure. Uh, what we use on the, the NOAA aircraft that I fly on is we have airborne Doppler radars uh, that allow us to do a CAT scan of the wind field in the storm um, and provide that information, which then improves the analysis for the model. Um, and what we've seen over the last four or five years is by using that information, we've been able to not only improve the track by, uh, you know, on the order of 5 to 10 percent, but we're also able to improve the, in, the intensity or the, the measurement of the structure of the storm, the, the wind speed and the wind structure, uh, so that we can better gauge the impacts. All right, Frank Marks with NOAA, thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe tomorrow. Mark Wysocki of Cornell, thank you so much for joining us.